Okay, so this is the lecture for chapter three, part two of two. Uh, we're going to study the formula mass, the mass of an individual molecule or formula unit, also known as molecular mass or molecular weight. The formula to calculate the formula mass is given here. So formula mass equals uh, number of atoms of the first element in the chemical formula divided by by the atomic mass of the first element plus the number of atoms of the second element in the chemical formula uh, times atoms uh, or atomic mass of the second element plus some other element if we have. Uh, it is the sum of the masses of atoms in a single molecule or formula unit. Uh, so the, sing, uh, the single molecule you can consider that is a whole. And then in that uh, uh, whole item, there are different plus. So therefore, it's, we have those plus and a plus. Uh, so sum of the plus. For example, mass of one molecule of H2O equals two times 1.01, and then plus 16 times uh, 16.00. Uh, so those numbers, uh, you know where they come from. So this uh, two come from the subscriber in the formula. And uh, then the, so then the uh, 1.01 .01 and 16.00, so these two numbers, let me change that. So this number and this number, they come from, they both come from, uh, you can get both of them from the periodic table. So you go to the periodic table, then you look at those elements. Under the name of the element, you will see this 1.01. Uh, maybe not exactly as written, written as that, you might get 1.008 uh, something or 7 something, so you run into 1.01. Uh, similar for, for oxygen, so in the periodic table, you might get 15.998, so you run into 16. Uh, so, as a practice, let's say this example 3.11, you calculate uh, the formula mass of glucose, which has this formula. You want to find out in this one molecule, uh, so what is the mass. To do that, you add uh, the atomic mass of each atom in the chemical formula. So you identify how many carbon, how many H, how many oxygen, and we can say we have six carbon, and we have 12 H, then we have six oxygen. Uh, so again, this, those numbers um, just kind of review. So this six should come from the subscript uh, of uh, carbon. And then we have the hydrogen. So hydrogen has the subscript of 12, so that will get, get this 12. Then we have the oxygen. So oxygen, uh, has subscript of six, so therefore we have, have that six. Uh, so then you will find uh, the atomic mass of carbon, atomic mass of uh, uh, hydrogen, so those three numbers you can get, uh, get from the periodic table uh, by looking at those blocks of each element. So go to the table, you find that 12.01, and uh, then you find 1.008. In the last problem, we run into, we run it to 1.01, 1.01. And uh, then you can see this 16.00 for oxygen. So therefore, you multiply two numbers, multiply two numbers, multiply, then you add, Get one eight zero point one six AMU. As a practice, you want to calculate the formula mass of calcium nitrate. So calcium nitrate is the ionic compound. Is an ionic compound, which means it has ions. So the ion for calcium is calcium two plus nitrate is angle three one negative. Okay, so therefore we can 
uh, write up the formula for, for it. So you switch the two uh, from the calcium and the subscript protocol angle three. Uh, so therefore you will use a parenthesis because you have more than one, so therefore two. Then the calcium subscript protocol will come from this uh, negative one. So one you have to you don't have to write. So therefore this will be the formula for calcium uh, nitrate. And then you can see you will have one calcium and two nitrogen and six oxygen. So that means we have one calcium and two nitrogen atom, atom and six oxygen atom. Um, so you get those, this one from uh, the, as you have, why, why is it one? Because there's calcium just, just one. Yeah. Or meat. So therefore, one times one equals one. So then, how we get how we get a two? So we have two times one here. So two times one here equals a two. How we get six? So you have this two uh, two here, three here. So three times two equals six. So then, how we get those six here, six here, two here, two here, and one here? Right here. Uh, so this uh, CRA three point fourteen is uh, what is the molecular mass of calcium phosphate? So it means calcium, and uh, with matter uh, phosphate is a polyatomic ion. So this is also ionic compound. And calcium ion is C two plus. Phosphate is Q4, three negative. So you switch the three onto uh, calcium, you switch the two onto phosphate. But when you have phosphate that similar as nitrate, the polyatomic ion, so you have to use the parenthesis Q4, then two. Uh, for calcium, you don't have to use the parenthesis. So this is the formula for our calcium phosphate. So from this, we can see we have uh, uh, three uh, Ca atom, Ca atom, and uh, we have uh, three because this is simply three here. Okay. So three calcium atoms, and then how many phosphorus atoms we have? Uh, so two times one. So therefore, we have two. Phosphorus atom. And how many oxygen atoms or atoms we have? We have eight, so two times four. So two times four equals eight. But right. so, so therefore we have this much of those atoms, and uh, you want to find the molecular mass, you just take, uh, uh, so we have three times the atomic mass of uh, calcium which is 40.08, uh, then plus two times the atomic mass of phosphorus, which is 30.097. Okay, so so this 40.08, 30.97, they both come from the periodic table. And similarly for, for oxygen, so oxygen atomic mass will be 16.00, so therefore, you multiply and add, you get uh, three one ten point one eight, and the unit is AMU because you only say this is uh, the molecular mass. So the answer is A. Our answer for this CRA three point fourteen is A. Um, so. Uh, last few problems, we calculated the mass of one molecular or one formula unit. Uh, so therefore, we have AMU. But in the laboratory, you usually will see a lot of those molecular. So for example, you have one more of the compound. And if you have one more of the compound, then the mass, uh, the name for the mass is molar mass. Okay? So the mass of one of the compound will be the molar mass of the compound. And numerically, 
the number is the same as the formula mass, uh, but for when, when, you, when you calculate the formula mass, so the unit will be AMU and, and per molecular. Uh, when you calculate uh, the molar mass, your unit will be gram per mole of that much of molecular or formula unit. So as compared, let's say formula mass of water uh, is the mass of one molecule of water. That, as what we did before, equals two times 1.01 plus 16 equals 18.02 AMU per molecule. So now if you see what is the mass of one more of H2O, which means you have uh, how much H2O? You have our got number of that much of H2O molecule. So by using the subscriber, we can see one more of H2O contains two more of H atom, one more of oxygen atom. So molar mass uh, equals mass of one more of H2O. Y of H2, which means 6.022 times 10 to the positive 23, this much of H2O molecules. And then that will equals 2 times 1.01 a gram of H and 16.00 gram of O. You can see the unit here. We change, as a compare, we change the unit uh, from AMU from AMU uh, into grams. AMU here uh, for the formula mass, and then here gram for the molar mass. So AMU here and a gram here. But numerical, numeri numerical number are the same. 1.01 is still 1.01, 16.00 is still 16.00. So depend on what you what you calculate. If you calculate the molar mass, make sure you you want to use gram uh, per mole. So therefore, molar mass of H2O is 18.02 gram per mole, and here and and there you have 18.02 also 18.02 by unit is AMU per molecule. And we call from table two that uh, one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the positive 23 power. Uh, example 3.12, the more concept convert between mass and the number of molecular. An aspirin tablet, tablet contains 325 milligram of uh, acetylsalicylic acid, uh, C9H804. How many acetylsalicylic acid molecular does uh, eight contain? Uh, so in, in, in this question, you are given a uh, milligram of a formula, then you want to find the, the number of this molecular. Uh, so our strategy will be first convert to moles using molar mass and then to number of molecular using the Avogadro number. Uh, the molar mass for C9 is 804 uh, equals 9 times 12.01, so this 9 here comes from this 9, and then 8 times 1.008, 4 times 16.00. So this is the model mass for this uh, C9 is 804. The other two equations you want to use is uh, our got a number in the model definition, and then milligram and the gram. So one milligram equals 10 to the negative three gram. So then we have our con conceptual plan. We start with given milligram and use this equation to make a conversion fraction to convert from milligram to gram. Then we are going to go from gram to moles by using this molar mass. Uh, from this molar mass, we write, uh, oh, I forget, this will be 180. 180 point. Then, so therefore, we have this 180.15. And then we will use the Avogadro number to make this last fraction. So, this is the three fractions we are going to use to solve this problem so fraction one, fraction two, fraction three. The next slide, we are going to follow the strategy plan to solve the problem. 
So we start with the 325 milligram and then multiply by the fraction. So we can see the milligram cancel out. Then we use the model mass of C9H804 cancel out of the gram. Then we are going to use this uh, fraction from the avocado number cancel out the mass. So finally we get 1.09 times 10 to the positive 23 power C9H804 molecules. Uh, CRI 3.15 asks uh, which uh, sample represents the greatest number of moles. Uh, so you uh, see the first question is the given gram of uh, CO2, and you want to convert a uh, gram of CO2 into a mole of CO2 by use molar mass of CO2 that will equals 12.01 plus Two times sixteen point zero zero, so that equals forty four point oh one gram per mole. So therefore, we can uh, divide this forty four point oh one gram and get one mole. So that will give us exactly one point zero zero moles. The second choice is already one mole. So that's one mole. Uh, C give you the number of uh, this C4 H10, and you want to find out uh, how many moles. You can use the avocado number. So avocado number is 6.022 times 10 to the positive 23 uh, for molecular for atom for anything. So you have one more. The molecular kind of out. So therefore, we also have 1.000 uh, more for, for this C. So D give you 18.02 gram of H2O. And you also want to use the model mass of uh, H2O. So model mass of H2O, uh, so let's do another practice. So we use more mm for model mass of uh, H2O. It for equals two times uh, the molar mass of H. So that is 1.01. Then one times the molar mass of uh, oxygen, which is 16.00. So that is 18.02 gram per mole. So therefore, we can use this molar mass of H2 to do the conversion here. So we want to divide out the gram, therefore we put 18.02 in the denominator, so that gives also 1.00 moles. So as a result, they all have one moles, one moles, one moles, and also one moles, and also one moles. So therefore, the answer is E. All of them have the same number of moles. They all have one mole. Uh, next question is, uh, which of the following contain the largest number of molecules? So you are given 10 grams of uh, each compound or, add or element, and you want to find out how many, how many number of molecules. So obviously you, are, you need to know the, the molar mass of each. Uh, so molar mass, uh, let's see, molar mass uh, of uh, uh, molar mass of uh, this a few uh, subtens. So we can make a, a list. Let's see, C to four, or equals one times twelve point oh one plus. 4 times 1.01 equals uh, 16.05 gram per mole. So similarly, more mass of uh, C2H6 so equals 2 times 12.01 plus 6 times 1.01. So that will be 30.08 gram per mole. 
Uh, next one you have is two. Uh, next one you have SO2. SO2. So we have one S, and then the mass for one S. Uh, what is mass for one S? Uh, uh, I think that will be 32 point something, 32.01, then plus two times the mass of 16.00. So altogether, check this number. I not sure, but you add them together, you get a 60. So this is 30, 30 point. Yeah. So get 62.07. Uh, gram per mole. Yeah, so I did not check the number, but I have the final result is right. Uh, so the last one is Xeno. So Xeno, uh, that is simple. I just go to the general table, so find the number for one Xeno is 131.29. So 139, uh, 131.29. Okay. Uh, so once we have uh, the Model mass for these four sub tenses. Then let's use them to the conversion. So the first one will be divided by 16.05 gram for one more. And then you are going to use the Avogadro number. So the Avogadro number for this will be uh, one more equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Right, uh, so the gram gram cancel out, and then the more and the more cancel out, you will get how much those uh, molecules of a C to four. Uh, so uh, let's let's keep it there, and uh, we will do the calculation later, or maybe we don't have to do calculation; we can just compare. Uh, yeah, so that's the idea. So now, uh, for this first question, we have 10 times that Avogadro number then divided by 16.05. So let's just uh, um, say what is the 10 times that? So 10 means 10 to the first power. So 10 to the first power times 10 to the 23 power, so you get 10 to the 24th power. So therefore, you will take a 6.022 times that divided by 16.05. The whole there, and we don't need to do the calculation, we just compare it. So for the second problem, and we will have this uh, very similar setting, but we have a different uh, model mass. So everything else are the same. So one more is 6.02 22 times 10 to the 23. So same idea. So this 10 is 10 to the first power, 10 to the first power times 10 to the 23 power, you get 10 to the uh, 24th power. And 6.022 is still the same, and divided by 30.08. So next question for SO2, you use the model mass of SO2, uh, but you still use the same uh, Avogadro number. So one more is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Uh, See gram cancel out, I have the gram, gram cancel out, more cancel out, so we get uh, 6.022 2 times 10 to the so 23 and times 10 become 24th power. And then divided by 62.07. Uh, so the last question is Zeno. So Zeno has more mass uh, 131.29. Then we show times by the fraction from the our God number. So therefore we get, uh, I mean, this is some here. Uh, so what we get will be the same uh, 6.022 uh, times 10 to the 24th 
divide by the 131. So we're right here, so 6 times square root 22 times 10 to the 24th divided by 131.99. So now what you compare is compare this three number. Right? So this three number, if you do the calculation, will give you number of molecular for each substance. So you compare this four number even before you do the divide. So the numerator are the same. They have a 622 times 10 to 24, but divided by different numbers. So when you divide by a small number, you get a larger number. So the smallest number you are going to divide is this 16.05. So let me highlight that. So 16.05 is the smallest number you use here for the divide. So therefore, the result is the largest. And uh, so that means our answer for this question is A. So that's our question, that's our answer. Uh, so next is uh, you want to uh, calculate or study the percent compositions. Uh, so uh, one percent composition is mass percent. Mass percent means percentage of uh, uh, element in a compound by mass. Uh, the formula for calculate mass percent of uh, element X equals a mass of element x in one of the compound divided by the molar mass of the compound times 100. Can, it can be determined from uh, the formula of the compound or from the experimental data. Uh, if you get those uh, percent of each element, it's not always total to 100% due to the roundings. Um, Example, calculate the mass percent of chlorine Cl in Freon 112. So Freon 112 has a formula C2 Cl4 F2. Uh, you want to find out the mass percent of Cl. So we are going to use the definition of mass percent. And then we will just uh, see how many uh, Cl atom in the formula, so there are four. So we will take four times the molar mass of Cl, then divide by the molar mass of this whole compound. So you take four times the molar mass of Cl, uh, so the molar mass of Cl is 35.45, uh, so that's 141.8 gram per mole. The molar mass of uh, the C2 acl 4 f 2 equals two times the mass of carbon plus four times the mass of Cl plus two times mass of fluorine. So that become 203.8. Then we will take 141.8 uh, divided by 203.8 times 100. So finally get 69.58. Uh, so then which of this following contains the largest mass percent of uh, hydrogen? Uh, even though it gives you 10 gram, but uh, we know per mass percent is an uh, intensive property. So mass percent is a uh, Intensive intensive property, which means does not depend on how much we have. So therefore, you don't have to worry about uh, the 10 gram and just use the the formula calculate what is the percent of hydrogen. What is mass percent of hydrogen? Uh, so to do that, uh, we'll use uh, the mass percent of uh, H. 
as let's say make a list. Uh, let's say for A, which is C H four, for B, which is C two H six. Uh, for C, it will be H two O. For D, it will be H two S. And then, then the the percent of H, it will be depend on how many H in there. Uh, and what is the model mass of the compound? So for the first one, we have four H. So therefore, we have four times y point O y. Then divided by everything together. Everything together for this, uh, it will be twelve point. Uh, well, I will just skip that, and then you can do the practice later. So I just use the model mass of each compound. So the model mass for this first compound, it will be 16.05. And, and then you times 100, so that will give you 25.2% of H. Uh, so for this question B, we have six H. So therefore we have six times 1.01. .01 then divided by so all together two carbon six H, the mass, the model mass will be 30.08. Then times 100 for this question, we get 20.1% of H. So similar for C, we have a two H, so two times 1.01 divided by so the model mass of together H2O is 18.02 times 100. So that would get 11.2% of H. Last question, you also have a 2 H. So therefore, 2 times 1.01, then divided by the model mass of H2S, which is 34.01. Then times 100, so that gives 5.92% of H. So now you have all the percent of uh, mass percent of H. So clearly, this is the largest. Even though we do not use 10 gram, because 10 gram or 100 gram of each element, you just have the same uh, mass percent. Uh, or each compound, you will have, have the same mass percent for the hydrogen. All right, so therefore the answer is uh, A. Uh, in this example, you want to use uh, mass percent composition as a conversion factor. So the US FD recommended that a person consume less than 2.4 gram of sodium per day. What a gram of sodium chloride can you consume and still within the FDA guidelines? And um, sodium chloride is NaCl. In NaCl, there's 39% by mass uh, of sodium. So therefore, uh, our conservative plan will be use uh, mass percent composition as a conversion factor. And you converting the, the given gram of uh, sodium Na into gram of NaCl. So when you see this information, like the 39% sodium by mass, you can write that as a fraction. So the fraction, either the 100 gram of uh, NaCl on the top or 39 gram of Na on the top. But in this problem, we are going to use this one. Uh, you can also flip it around, depending on the problem. So both of this come from the this information. So this information give you two fractions. So for this problem, use the refraction on the left because it give you 2.4 gram NA. So 2.4 gram NA has NA on the top, and 39 gram of NA 
the gram and at the bottom, so you, you can cancel out. So therefore, the unit you have uh, remaining is the gram and ACL. The number you get is by taking 2.4 divided by 39 times 100. Uh, so for this uh, CRA 3.18, it's asking what mass of iron 3 oxide contains 58.7 gram of iron. The so iron oxide is uh, Fe2O3. So the, the good we, we are given the mass percent of iron by mass. Uh, so when you have this given mass percent by iron, which which can be written as uh, 69.94 GFE over 100 gram of Fe203. Or you can flip and write 100 gram of Fe203 over 69.94 gram Fe. So depending on what question you have, can either use this fraction on the left or that fraction on the right. So for this CRA 3.18, we are given the 58.7 gram, gram of what? Of iron, which means Fe. So then you want to find out the gram of iron 3 oxide. So therefore you had to use that uh, second fraction. But the second fraction has 69.94 gram Fe at the bottom. So therefore, there will be a cancellation. So you can see this gram of Fe, gram Fe cancel out. So that's why we use the second fraction. After you do that, you get 83.9 gram of uh, Fe203. So therefore the answer is B. Uh, CRA 3.19, if someone consumes 22 gram of sodium chloride, sodium chloride is an ACL per day, what mass of sodium does that person consume? Uh, sodium chloride is 39%, 39 uh, sodium by mass. So from this information again, you can write uh, two fractions, so 39 gram and A over 100 gram and A Cl, or you write 100 gram and A Cl over 39 gram and A. So now for this question, you you are you given 22 gram of Na. You want to find out how many gram of uh, uh, you are given 22 gram of NaCl. You want to find out how many gram of uh, of sodium. So therefore, you just uh, take this 22 gram of NaCl, and you want to cancel out the gram of NaCl by using the first fraction on the left. Because if you use this one, and you will have 100 gram of NaCl in the denominator, so you can see the cancellation of uh, something on the top to something at the bottom. So that will give us the right unit. And if we take 22 times 39, then divided by 100. So we get 8.6 gram of Na. So that means it, uh, uh, this is how much you get. I think that's over the limit of FDA. Uh, but anyhow, so this answer is C. Okay, so you can also get the conversion factors in chemical formula. Chemical formula have inherent in them the relationships between numbers of atoms and uh, 
per molecule. Or mass of atom and mass of molecules. So for example, the formula H2O tells the following relation. One more H2O equivalent to this wiggling sign, we can understand this as the equivalent. Uh, so a proportional to two moles of H. Or you can write this in the conversion fractions. So you can write uh, uh, two more H over one more H2O or one more H2O over two more of H. Uh, the relationship can be used to convert between amount of constituent element and molecules. Uh, very similar as you can use this as as when you use as uh, when you use uh, uh, percent composition as percent by mass. Okay, so this example is a chemical formula as a conversion factor. You want to determine the number of molecules of oxygen in 1.7 moles of uh, calcium uh, carbonate. So from this, uh, you can see given 1.7 moles of uh, calcium uh, carbonate. Uh, you want to find more of O. So let's think about this uh, calcium is one whole unit. So one calcium, uh, I mean, this calcium CO3, CaCO3 as a, as a whole unit. So one CaCO3 has how many of those components? How many Ca? One Ca. How many carbon? One carbon. How many oxygen? Three oxygen. So therefore, we can use this information and um, to write conversion fractions. So if you are given more of CaCO3, you want to find more of oxygen, you will write the equation uh, of proportions between this CaCO3 and the number of oxygen atoms. So that means you can write two of them, depending on what, what gives you what you find out. For this one, we will write three more of uh, three more O on the top, one more CaCO3 at the bottom, and uh, so that will help you solve the problem. So if you start with 1.7 more CaCO3 by using this fraction here as written, and you can see the cancellation. Uh, so therefore, we get 5.1 more of O. Uh, CI 3.20 is uh, how many more of oxygen are in 3.45 more of uh, diphosphorus pentoxide? Very similar to the last example, but the little different is that you have to know what is the formula for diphosphorus pentoxide. So phosphorus means P, oxide means O, then use the prefix di means 2, pent means five. So this is the formula for our compound. So from this we can see Y more P2O5. Uh, you can write in a fraction format. It will be uh, for oxygen. So it will be five moles of oxygen. Or you write opposite. You can flip these two information. Uh, so you can write the five moles of oxygen in the numerator, then one more of P2O5 in the denominator. So now if you are given 3.45 moles of P2O5, so let's decide what fraction we use to cancel out more of P2O5. So here is the P2O5 at the bottom, so therefore we use the second fraction on the right. So we write one more of P2O5 times five more of O. Then you can see the cancellation. Uh, so we cancel out more P2O5, more P2O5. So therefore we get uh, the unit will be more of O. So we get unit more of O.
then you take uh, 3.45 times 5, so you get uh, uh, 17 point two five but you run into seventeen point three. So therefore the answer is E. This is the answer. Uh, for this CRA three point twenty one, you want to calculate the number of carbon atoms in twenty five point zero gram of isopropyl alcohol C three H eight O. So to do that, you need uh, uh, the model mass of that. So let's write model mass of uh, C3H8O equals three times the model mass of carbon. So model mass of carbon in here, 12.01, 12.01. So that's how we use the periodic table to get the atomic mass on the model mass of the atom. Then we have 8H. So what is the mass for H? H is 1.01 in this table. So 1.01. Then we have 1O. So 1 times oxygen, 16.00. 16.00. So that's added together, we have uh, uh, 60.11 gram per mole. Uh, so that's the one uh, you want to use in this program. Now the uh, information you need to use in the program is for one of this and how many carbon. Okay. So from this formula, we can see one more C3H8O equivalent. As the equivalent, all the time we use this weakening sign. So here, probably use. The consistent use the weekly sign. So the weekly sign means equivalent. Okay. So equivalent to how many moles of carbon? So to get that, you just read the formula here. So you have three, so therefore you have three. Okay. So let me highlight. We get the three. So this three come from this three. So now we have this information we need. Now the information. You, you probably don't forget is the our garden number. So we write one more equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So now I have three equations you can use. This model mass you need, and this proportion you need, then this definition of more you need. So we'll do it here. And we will start with 25.0 gram of C3H8O, and then use the model mass from the last slide. So we have this amount of gram in one more. Then we use our color number, so one more of C3H8O is. 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And uh, you can see those conditions and see what's left over. So this gram cancel out, more cancel out. That means we have this much C3880. So next, you use the, the fraction or the information from the formula. So from the formula, we can see. Uh, on the last slide, uh, so let's maybe go to the last slide and see the conversion from the formula is uh, this guy. Okay, so for y c three h eight o there are three c. So now go back here. We see y c three h eight o, okay, and there will be three. C. So now the calculation will happen to the name. So C three is eight. C three is eight kind of. Art. Therefore, we get a C. So therefore, we get that much C atoms. Okay. So 
7.51 times 10 to the 23 C or C atom. So, so that's the answer. And you go back, check the answer. So that will matching the D. Uh, this section is about finding an empirical formula. So you do a, a few practices for the steps. So the first step is uh, convert the mass percent to grams. So usually those kind of questions will give you the mass percent for each element in a given compound. Sometimes I'll give you the gram directly. Uh, so for this question, uh, to do that, you assume you, you start with 100 gram of the compound. So therefore, if you have 100 gram of the compound, okay, the mass percent means you have 100 gram of the compound, and then you will have a 60.00 gram of carbon. So this fraction comes from the first, so this fraction comes from the first mass percent. Okay. So you cancel out the gram of the compound, gram component, gram cancel out, you get gram of the element. So for this first one, you get a 60.00 gram of C. You do the same for the other uh, element. So for the second element is H 4.48 gram H 100 gram compound and then you get 4.48 gram of H. Uh, for oxygen the same. So we have 100 gram compound, the mass percent for oxygen is 100 gram of uh, compound proportional to 35.52 gram of oxygen. So we have 35.52 uh, gram of oxygen, okay? So this is the first step, you convert, uh, uh, the per mass percent into gram of each element. So after that, you do the second step, which means you, you convert the gram of each element into moles. So from the other step, from step one, we already know we have, a, if we have 100 gram of compound, we will have a 60.00 gram of carbon. And then, you're starting with this 60.00 gram of carbon and uh, use more mass of carbon, which is 12.01 gram and one more to calculate how many more of carbon. So that will be 4.996 more of carbon. More carbon. Then you do the same for hydrogen. So hydrogen is 4.48 gram. A more mass of hydrogen is 1.01 gram. And one more, 4.436 more of H. Same process for the oxygen. Oxygen model mass you get from the here the other table is 16.00 gram and uh, one more. So 2.220 moles of oxygen. Uh, so next, using the moles of each element and the pseudo and the subscriber to get the pseudo formula. So therefore we have uh, C 4.9 Nine six. Well, H will be four point four three six. So for oxygen, and turn that back. For oxygen, we have this much more. Therefore, it will be two point twenty two zero. So this is our pseudo formula. But this, we don't really get the, get those uh, into the the right format yet. 
So what you do to, to get the right format is compare these three numbers, see what is the smallest number, let's go to the next step. You divide all those subscripts by the smallest number of more. So what we get so far is C, if I write it here, so C uh, 4.996, that H, 4.436 oxygen, 2.220. So 2.220 in this example is the smallest mole. So you take this divide into every one. So therefore you do that. So you take C is 4.996 divided by 2.220, okay? Do the same for H. So H is 4.436 divided by 2.220. And then you will do the same uh, for the oxygen in the cell. So oxygen itself is 2.20. So therefore you will take a 2.20 divided by 2.20. Okay. So oxygen 2.220 divided by 2.220. And so that will divide, you will get 2.25 for carbon, then for H you get 1.998. Then for oxygen become one. So then the result, what this means is if we then 0 0.1 of a whole number, then you run into a whole number. So what that means you, for example, you compare this. You see 1.998 is uh, closer to two, okay? So then you will compare, you use two minus 1.998. So that will give you 0 0.002. So 0 0.002 is uh, less than less than 0 0.1. So that means within. So, so that means within 0 0.1. So therefore you can round into two. Okay? So therefore, uh, so you, we write a formula, so the C something H and H uh, can run into two. So O obviously is one, is that for one. So then what about the carbon? So carbon right now has the subscript 2.25. So 2.25 is uh, closer to two than three, right? So any decimal numbers is between two integer. So 2.25 is between two and three. So then you compare this 2.25 with two. So if you take a 2.25 minus a two, that will give us 0 0.25, which is larger than 0 0.1. So therefore, larger than 0 0.1, that means not within 0 0.1. So therefore, you cannot run. Okay? So therefore, you have to keep right this as 2.25. To five. But this is not the final answer. So next step will tell you what to do. If you have some of those decimal numbers, you cannot run. So here we go. So if uh, so if we have our final, let me use all those so we can write what we have so far. What we have so far is the carbon 2.25 and A is 2 and O is 1. So what this is the problem? So you cannot run in, then here I'll tell you what to do. So if any number, uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, that means in this example, you get a 2.25. So therefore you will multiply every subscript by, by four. Uh, so in some other examples, you might get 3.25 or 4.75. So any name, if you get some number any with 0 0.25, 0 0.25, or 0 0.75, you multiply them by four. So let's, let's do that. So we have a C 2.25 times four. 
So when, when what I mean here, you, you multiply every subscript by by those numbers, by four, by three, or, or by whatever they, they tell you. So here you multiply by four, then you will take that two for each also multiply by four, then O one times four. So as a result, you will get um, carbon become nine, H become eight, and O become four. So this will be our final answer for our imperial formula. So everyone is the integer, you get you get the integer not by simply uh, rounding off or rounding up. Some some of them you can simply run it off and run it up, but those kind of pro numbers you cannot simply run it up if they are not within 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is kind of the cutting line for the rounding. All right, so this example is uh, give you the gram of two element directly, so therefore you can save one step and just take 20. 4.5 gram of A and 70.0 gram of O. Um, so then step two, you will take 24.5 gram divided by the molar mass of A, get 1.75 mole of A, and uh, then you take 70.0 gram of O uh, divided by 16, get 4.38 mole of O. Oh, I want to say these two numbers. So these two numbers you get for one example, so for one example uh, of, of the compound. So they are just grams. Okay? Uh, so they are just grams. So they are not necessarily adding together to 100. Okay? So you can have any any gram of uh, nitrogen, any gram of oxygen, depend on the compound. Okay? All right. So then the step three, you will use uh, the more from step two as the subscript to get the theory formula. The next one, you take, you compare these two numbers, see which one is smaller. You take the smaller one, divide into both of them. So in this example, 1.75 is the smaller one. So therefore, you take 1.75 divided by 1.75, then you also take a 4.38 divided by 1.75. So therefore, you get M1 and O2.5. So again, this 2.5 is, is, uh, is not so close to an uh, integer, so therefore, you don't do the rounding. You have to multiply those by some numbers. So obviously, 2.5, if you 2.5, you multiply by 2, that becomes 5. So that's the next step. Uh, and here I give you more list. So for example, you, if you have some number, let's say 2.20, you multiply by five. So in this number, you have 2.5, you multiply by two, okay? Uh, so don't forget, when I write that, that means you multiply every subscript by that. So every subscript by that. So therefore, one times two is two, two point five times two is five. And uh, now this problem go back as uh, given as a percent. So therefore, you have to uh, assuming one hundred gram of our sample for the compound, and then we were simply write very quickly, so we have a 60.86 gram C. And then we will have a 5.83 gram of H. Then we have a 23.16 gram of uh, O. Then we have a 10.14 gram of N. So next, you just use the model mass of each element to to calculate the more of each element. So for carbon, we have uh, that number, and uh, then we divide by 12.01, we get 
six to seven mole of C. For H, we know the molar mass of H is 1.01. So therefore we get 5.772 mole of H. And then we have oxygen as a molar mass uh, 16. So we get 1.448 more of oxygen. For nitrogen, the molar mass seems to be 14.01 gram. So 0 0.7238 more of A. So then that guy is the smallest number. Okay? You will take that. Uh, divide into all the others. So you can first write them as themselves. So C5.067 A is 5.772 then O is 1.448 then A is 0 0.7238 so because this 0 0.7238 is the smallest one, so next step, you will take all of them divided by that. Uh, so we'll start with carbon, 5.087 divided by 0 0.7238. Then we'll take the number for H, 5.772 divided by 0 0.7238 and take the number for oxygen 1.448 divided by 0 0.7238 and do the same for the nitrogen itself 0 0.7238 divided by 0 0.7238 so then we'll just do the divide and that's what we get for carbon. You get 7.001. For H, we get 7.975. For oxygen, we get 2.001. For nitrogen, that's exactly one. So now all of them is within um, 0 0.1. So therefore, so all of them are within 0 0.1 to an uh, integer. Okay, so 7.001 is close enough to 7. 7.975 is close enough to 8. So therefore, we are rounding them. And uh, so our answer will become C seven H eight O two and A one. Well A one don't have to write A one. I just write there anyhow. So so this will be our final answer. So you convert this, so this will be D. So therefore, our answer is D. Okay, uh, so this is the CRA 3.22. Uh, not D. So this is C8, so that will be B. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so our answer is C7 and B is C8, so it should be B. Yeah, so let's check C7, C7, H8, O2, and one. Okay, so answer is B. Let me change that. So. Uh, 
also here. Okay, uh, so next uh, second thing is the molecular formula. Uh, the molecular formula is the multiple of the imperative formula. To determine the molecular formula, you need to know the imperative formula and the molar mass of the compound. If you know that, you will get the multiplying factor or the multiple. So there is the multiple. How many multiple is the molecular formula uh, compared with the imperative formula? So that maybe in multiple like n, so n can be one, two, three, four, or five, and so on, okay? Now, how do you know what is the, the multiple? You can know that if you know the molar mass of the compound, you take the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula, and you get an N. Let's say this example. So i give you the empirical formula of the butane dion. Uh, the empirical formula is C2H3O. And also tell you the molar mass of the compound, the molar mass of a butane dion, then you want to find out the molecular formula. So what do you do? You need to know this process. So that means molecular formula equals the imperial formula times A. So the imperial formula is given to you. So the imperial formula is C2H3O. So therefore, you if you know what is the n, you are going to use multiply, then you solve the problem. So the n will be molar mass of the compound divided by molar mass of, of the imperial formula. So for any formula, as we learned before, you can calculate the molar mass. Okay, so therefore, let's first calculate the molar mass of this formula. And just read the question, you see how many carbon, how many H, how many O. So you have two carbon, three H, and one O. So therefore, you get 43.04 gram per mole, which is the mole, uh, mole mass for this petal formula. So next, you will use this formula to calculate the N. So in this formula, you need the mole mass of the compound and mole mass of the petal formula. So mole mass of the petal formula gets to find out which will be this. 43.04 here. Do we know the molar mass of the compound? Yes, so the question is given to us. So therefore, we will use this with the given. And then that, you get to find out. To the divide, you get two. So now you will use the two multiply on all the subscriptors in the imperial formula. Okay. So here you go, multiple formula equal to imperial formula times A. Just know what that means. That means you are taking this two times that subscript part, take this two times that subscript part, then there is a Y. So that means you also take that two times that. Okay? So therefore two times two is four, two times three is six, and and and, and so on. So that will be our molecular formula. You can check that by checking back. If you have this molecular formula, you see what is the molar mass? There are four carbon, a six, eight, and, and two O. So you get 86.09. That we cover exactly the given molar mass for the compound. All right. So this CRA uh, is kind of very tedious because it give you the mass percent and then give you the molar mass of the compound, you want to find out the molecular formula for the compound. So it's kind of a lengthy program. That means you have to first use those uh, mass percent and start with uh, assuming you have 100 gram of uh, the compound of the sample of the compound then you will have a 39.97 gram of C. Then you have 13.41 gram of H. Then, then 46.662 gram of A. So then from that, you can find, uh, find out or figure out uh, what will be our the empirical formula. 
Okay. So you first use the model mass of carbon to see how many more of carbon in this 100 assumed uh, gram of uh, the sample. So that will give you uh, 3.328 more of C. And uh, do the same for H and uh, O. So, so therefore you have all the moles for all the elements. And then use the moles of the element, you can write a pseudo formula. Now we're doing the other thing. 3.328 more of oxygen. So if our pseudo formula can be written as C3.328 pseudo empirical formula. And then H 13.28 and oxygen 3.328. So next let's divide. So we'll take C3.328 divided by 3.328. H is 13. Point Two eight divided by three point three two eight. Oxygen three point three two eight divided by three point three two eight. Uh, so after we divide, so C become one. H become H become what? H become not exactly one, but uh, not exactly an integer, but close enough. Then oxygen become one. So this is close, so close to, to four, which means um, it's zero point zero uh, one away from four. So therefore, it's, it's less than zero point one. So therefore, we can run into this to four. So therefore, our entire formula will be C H four and O. So this will be our empirical formula. So our purpose is to find a molecular formula. So molecular formula usually is a multiple of the empirical formula. So if you can find out what is multiple, then you just use multiple multiple to do subscript to get a molecular formula. So that we have to find out the molar mass of our empirical formula. So then we equals, uh, let's write our empirical formula C H four N H N. So we'll have one times twelve point oh one plus four times one point oh one plus one times fourteen point oh one. So that means our empirical formula have a mass thirty point oh six gram per mole. So then our n, which is the multiplier, will equals the molar mass of the compound and then divide by molar mass of our empirical formula. So the molar mass of the compound is given. So 6.01, that is the P way in the program, and that is the gram for more. In the formula, we just find out 30.06 gram for more. So that will give us 1.997, which definitely can run into two. Okay. So then you will see our molecular formula equals empirical formula times n. So we already all know all the information. So our empirical formula is CH4n. Our n is two 
therefore we will take the two times everything. So therefore what we get is uh, C2H8, that would equal C2H8 and N2. All right, so therefore, let's see, what is the answer? Okay, so let's see, we have, uh, um, so our impairment formula is, uh, is this, and uh, is a C, CH4N, our molecular formula is C2H8N2, so therefore the answer is D. Okay, so next section is the composing analysis. That's another way to find the, the impaired formula. So usually in the composing process, you will have this furnace. In the furnace, you have the sample. Then the oxygen or the air go in. Then uh, the composing of the sample uh, is the reaction of the sample with oxygen gas. So if our example has, if our example, uh, if our example of the compound uh, only have uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, then this is typical. Uh, this is a typical compound we use in this process. So if the compound can can have only carbon H or only carbon uh, hydrogen and oxygen, then the product of the complete combustion will be H2O and CO2. Then you can design some of those uh, equipment so you can absorb the water, absorb the CO2. Then you can analyze so how many CO2 we have, we get, how many uh, water we get, and uh, then we can um, from the information from the mass of uh, CO2 we get, uh, from the mass of water we get, and uh, we can calculate uh, originally how many more of uh, carbon in the initial compound. Uh, we, we obviously we assume our technique is perfect, which means all the original carbon is converted into CO2 all the original hydrogen is converted into H2O. Then the original mass of oxygen can be found by subtraction. So if we know our total mass of the compound at the beginning, and uh, we can subtract in the mass of the compound by the mass of the carbon, by the mass of H. Uh, so you will see from this example what, what I mean. Let's see, we have an uh, uh, example of unknown compound has only carbon, H, and oxygen. So before the combustion, your example have this much of gram. Uh, so just as an uh, analogy, so you can think about it all together, this compound is uh, the mass of the compound is this pi diagram. So the pi diagram all together is uh, 0.8233 grams. Um, so this 0 0.833 gram will be the gram of carbon plus gram of H plus gram of O. So if we know uh, this is the situation, then we also know we, we have this compound uh, go through the combustion produced 2.445 gram of carbon dioxide and also 0 0.6003 gram of H2O. So from, um, from this information, you follow the process. You first write how many gram of H2O you produce, how many gram of car uh, carbon dioxide you produce. So we have 2.44 gram of carbon dioxide. Then we also want to convert this, uh, go to the second step, we convert the gram of carbon dioxide and a gram of water into more of both of them using molar mass. So for carbon dioxide, we use molar mass of 44.01 and we get cancellation. Then we have 0 0.5556 more of 
carbon dioxide. For uh, water, you do the same conversion. So use mole mass of water, 18.02. So you convert it 0 0.6003 gram of water into how many moles? Into 0 0.3331 mole of water. So step three is convert the mole of CO2 and mole of H2O to mole of carbon and mole of H using the conversion factors in the formula. Okay, so if you have 0 0.05556 mole of CO2, you can read the formula, you can see for every one CO2, there is one carbon. So therefore, we have this one to one ratio. One mole of CO2, one mole of carbon. So we get uh, 0 0.05556 mole of carbon in the original of this much example, in this much example. Uh, for water, uh, you also read the formula carefully. So you can see for every one H2O, there should be two H. So therefore, you have this one and a two ratio. And uh, you, you see the more of H will be twice the more of H2O. So you know, now you get more of carbon, more of H. So remember, if you want to get the imperial formula, you need to know the most of every element. Okay? So we have three elements in this example. We have carbon, we have hydrogen, we also have oxygen. But to find out more of oxygen, we have to use the more of carbon, use more of H, get the gram of carbon, get the gram of H, then we start the gram of carbon, gram of H into the total gram of the compound. Okay. So therefore, next step, we are going to use the more of carbon, use more of H to get how much gram of carbon, how much gram of H in this example. So we take 0 0.05556 more of carbon, use more mass of carbon and we see we have that converted into 0 0.6673 gram of carbon. So therefore this pi diagram can replace part of this pi by the gram of carbon. You do the same for the hydrogen. So we get 0 0.06715 gram of hydrogen. So we replace that part by 0 0.06715. So all the three parts together is 0 0.8233 gram. So therefore we can take the total, so this was our total mass, then minus the mass of uh, carbon, minus the mass of H, okay, get the mass of oxygen. So once we get the mass of oxygen, then we can use more mass of oxygen to calculate what is the more of oxygen in our example. So we get 0.00556 more of oxygen. So now we know all the moles of the three elements. We have this much more of oxygen, we have this much more of uh, hydrogen, we have this much more of carbon. So therefore, we can use more to write the pseudo formula. Then you will use the smallest number divided into all the others. So the smallest number is this. So this is the smallest subscriber. And we take that divided into all. So therefore, we get 10.0, 11.98. So this is close enough, running to 12. Therefore, our final answer is C10 is 12 O. Uh, so this uh, CIA 3.24 is very similar. Um, so you are given the compound total is 3.69, and then you are given uh, 5.4 gram of CO2. So therefore, we write up first. So we have 5.40 gram of CO2 and we have a 2.22 gram 
of these two. So that's our first step. Second step, you want to convert 5.40 gram of CO2 into the moles by using molar mass of CO2, which is 44.0 gram and one moles. So that will give us how much more of CO2, right? Yeah, so you check later, so how do you get more mass of CO2? And then, let's see for this problem, and uh, we get uh, uh, CO2 moles will be 0 0.123 moles of CO2. Uh, for water, so we do the same. We have 2.22 gram of uh, H2O. Then you check later the molar mass for H2O is 18.02 gram for one mole. So that also gives you one point, uh, 0 0.123 mole of uh, H2O. So next, you are going to convert more of CO2 into more of carbon. So we have 0 0.123 moles CO2. Then you want to read this formula so you can see one CO2 and how many C, only one C. So therefore, you also get uh, this 0.123 moles of C. Uh, so then 0 0.123 moles of H2O, so that will be a little bit different because if you read this problem, if you have 1 H2O, how many H? 2 uh, H. Therefore, you have to take 0 0.123 times, then get 0 0.246 more of H. So then go to step 4. We use 0 0.123 moles of C, and we know the molar mass of the C is 12.01 gram. So therefore, we have 1.48 gram of C. Then we have 0 0.246 moles of H. Then we know one mole of of h is 1.01 gram of h we get 0 0.248 gram of h and then subtracting so we have a total 1.9 uh not 1.9 we total have uh, what is total mass of our compound for this given problem is 3.69 so 3.69 minus 1.48 minus 0 0.248. So we get 1.96 gram of O. Uh, okay, so then once you get 1.96 gram of O, you can use molar mass of O to calculate the mole of O. So that means we have a 0 0.123 moles of O. All right, so now we know all the moles. We know mole of O in the vampire is 0 0.123. And we know the more of H is 0 0.246. We know more of carbon is 0 0.123. Okay, so we'll use those two, three information. In the next step, we write up our pseudo formula. So we have C 0 0.123, and H 0 0.246, and O 0 0.123. And then you divide all those subscribed by the smallest one. So the smallest one, 0 0.123. So take a C, 0 0.123 divided by 0 0.123. H, 0 0.246 divided by 0 0.123. R, 
arbitrary 0 0.1 to 3 divided by 0 0.1 to 3. So therefore, you get C1, H2, and O1. Then that's it. So step 7 can skip because you already have all those integers. So that will be our uh, answer. That will be our answer. So what is uh, uh, what's that matching? That matching uh, C1 is 201. So that matching the answer is E. Right, uh, so next uh, uh, section is the balance chemical equations uh, to show the reaction or base, the law of conservation of mass, the equation must be balanced. To balance the equation, we adjust the number of molecules by using the coefficient in the equation. So there will be equal numbers of atoms of each element on both sides of the arrow. So these are the coefficients, okay? Coefficient and coefficient, and one is also coefficient, and one is also coefficient. So when the coefficient is one, you omit. So when you balance the equation, you don't change those are the subsequent. You don't change, don't change them. So once you have the equation, uh, use the coefficient balanced, then you can check for this problem. So on the left side, we have 1C4H4O, same for the element on the right side of the arrow. Uh, you also need to notice those samples used in the equation. Uh, for example, we use uh, G for the state gas, Use arrow for the state liquid. Use S for the state uh, solid. There's one more notation is AQ. AQ representing aqueous solution, which means those uh, substances dissolved in water. Some other information, you really can see the triangle means heat, HV means light, and some others. So this example is you want to write uh, and balance the equation is first uh, translate by write the formula from the name. So for this particular question, you have a solid, so that's S, then cobalt 3, that means initially you have a CO3 plus ion, oxide is a two negative ion, so the two become the subscript, three become the subscript, so therefore you have CO2, uh, CO2, CO203, cobalt 203. The other reactant is solid carbon, so solid, solid carbon is C, therefore we have the other reactant. Then tell you the product, so it produces solid cobalt, so cobalt CO, so therefore cobalt and solid. And carbon dioxide gas, so gas is key, so therefore we have this preliminary equation. So then we want to balance the equation by try an arrow. So uh, just a couple of hand, uh, you can use uh, any number for the coefficient at the beginning. You can use a fraction decimals. So that's the one hand. The other hand, you begin by balance those atoms in the compound and leave those atoms that somewhere it exists as a pure element, the last one to balance. So we have three elements. We have cobalt, we have oxygen, we have carbon. So only oxygen does not appear anywhere as a free element. So therefore we'll begin with oxygen. Uh, so you're checking, right now we have three oxygen on the left, two oxygen on the right. So the balance between three and two will be easier if you see the common number is six. So therefore we will uh, multiply this one 
by two get a six. That means you can put a two here, and you can put a a, a, a three here. So therefore, we will balance our arcing atom by change the coefficient of this from one to two, change the coefficient of this CO two from one to three. Then next you can balance either the carbon or the CO first uh, or next. So let's balance the CO, and then we check how many CO on the left. We have four CO. Where you get a four CO, we have two times two. Okay, there is only one CO on the right. So therefore, uh, because on the right the CO exists as a pure element, so this is a pure element. You change into any numbers will not uh, bother any other element. So therefore, what do we do? They simply place a four or represent a one by four. So now our cobalt is balanced. The next balance the carbon by checking how many carbon on the left, how many carbon on the right. So there's one carbon here on the left, and there's a three times one carbon on the right. So to balance the carbon, you can simply put a three here. That's what you will do. You put a three there. So this is our balance balanced equation. You can check in that and make sure that is true. Uh, uh, so we'll copy the equation here, then we, we, we check. So left side, right side of the arrow. That's the arrow here. And uh, then we see how many cobalt there are four, how many cobalt four, uh, and so on. Uh, for this example, and uh, you want to, again, uh, so first write up the, the, form, the equation. Uh, of the formula for the reactant, and then you see translate the product in name into formula. Uh, next, you want to balance um, those atoms. Remember, there's one hand. Uh, you check which element exists as pure. So this is a pure element. So leave this the last one to balance. So therefore, we can start with either carbon or H. Let's start with uh, carbon. Uh, so to balance the carbon, we have four carbon here, and one carbon here, so therefore we put a four here. Uh, next, we have to balance the H. So how many H we have? We have a 10 H and we have two H. So therefore, we will put a five here. So next, we want to balance the oxygen. Uh, so you check how many oxygen on, on, on the right. So there's uh, four times two is eight. Then five times one is five. So eight plus five is 13. And you want to get 13 from this guy. So this guy always exists as two. So therefore you place 13 over 2 in the front. So therefore, you will put 13 over 2. So if you do that, that means 13 over 2 times 2 gives you 13. But it's not the loose, OK, because usually you don't have a, a fraction as a coefficient. So if you see there's a fraction, there's a denominator, so the easiest way to change the fraction into an integer is to multiply the fraction by the denominator. So the denominator of two is therefore you multiply by two. You do that, you have to multiply everyone by two. Okay, so that means you multiply the two onto this five. You multiply this two onto this four. Then you multiply this two onto this 13 over two. So I use times. Then you also multiply this here by two. Here I don't see anything means one. Okay. So therefore, after you multiply, you get this result. So you get two. So this two come from two times one. One or one times two. Okay. This 13 comes from 13 over two 
times two. This eight come from four times two. This 10 come from five times two. Then you check And uh, uh, so then we check that and uh, we see the balance. Uh, so this CRA is uh, what are the coefficients for the decomposition of the nitroglycerin? So we have quite a few elements. And uh, let's say this one is a pure element. And there's other pure element. So this is also pure element. So therefore, we can leave this last one to balance. Last one to be balanced. So therefore, let's go from left to right. Okay. So we, at the beginning, we assume there's a one, and then we want to get uh, uh, n balance. There are three n. We want to get three n from this. You can put a coefficient like three over two, right? Because uh, three over two times two equals three. Okay, so that's balance A. Then next, let's balance this uh, C. So there are three C on the left. So with that signal, we put a three here. Next, let's checking the H. So how many H do we have? We have five H. So balance H. We can put a phi over two here because of phi over two coefficient times the two subscript give us a phi, so phi of h. So, so now we balance all the atoms except oxygen. So let's check how many oxygen on the left. So we have nine oxygen. Uh, how many, how many oxygen one get? On the right, I call this x coefficient. Okay, so therefore nine through e cross uh, all the oxygen on the, on the right are adding together. So how many oxygen from this one? Uh, three times two equals six oxygen. And and how many oxygen from this one? You will get five over two times one, which equals two point five oxygen. How many from this one? Two times x are the same. Okay, so we have three uh, give oxygen. So CO2 has oxygen, six oxygen so far. And 5 over 2 water gives us 205 oxygen. Okay, so then x coefficient of O2 will give us two times x oxygen. Okay, so therefore on the right, all the oxygen will come from six. From here, plus 2.5, right? So then plus 2 times x. So you, you solve for x. So 9 minus 6 minus 2.5 equals 2x. So that means uh, 0 0.5 equals 2x. So therefore, x equals 0 0.25 or equals 1 over 4. Okay, now we know what is x. So x is 1 over 4. So let's write that as 1 over 4. Uh, so we put that 1 over 4. Okay, now this equation, it will balance, every atom will balance, but we have a, a fraction. So we have this fraction has a denominator four, this has two, this has two. So the easiest way to change all those fractions into integers is multiply every one by four. Okay. So if we multiply every one by four, then let's see, this one will become uh, four. Uh, so this one becomes four. And this one will become six, right? Because three over two times four equals six. Therefore, this becomes six. So then this become 12. 
So three times four equals twelve. So therefore, this become twelve. And this become become what? This become ten. Become ten. This become one. Okay. So therefore, uh, let me highlight those final answers. So four, six, twelve, ten, and one. Okay. So four, six, twelve, ten, and one. So therefore, the answer is E. Okay, so the last question is to balance this equation. So if you want to balance this equation, uh, you can uh, you can see you change the coefficient, right? So we can rewrite get some space. So let's write C five is ten plus O two reduce C O two and plus H two to me. So let's uh, so we'll leave O2, the last one to balance, to be balanced, um, because that is a free element. Let's start with carbon, for example. A two carbon, we'll put a two here. Okay. Um, Maybe I change the, my pen. Uh, so two carbon, you put a two, you balance the carbon. So put a two here. So ten, you put a five here. No, see the O. So uh, so two times two gives four, and five times one gives five. So four plus five equals nine. Sorry, I copied the equation wrong. <laughs> so this is five, not two. Uh, that's all of them. So let's see. Let's read it. We saw ten. So we have a C five H ten plus O two values C O two plus H2O, right? So now let's balance again. So there are five carbons, so therefore we put a five here, and we put a five here. Now we want to balance the oxygen. So we have five times two equals 10, then five times one equals five. So 10 plus five equals 15 O, so you want to get a 15 O on the left. The problem is on the left, you have O2. So at the beginning, you will have to put a 15 over two because 15 over two times two gives you 15 O. But you don't leave this as the final answer. So most of the time you don't use fraction as a coefficient. So that we did in the last question, so right now we have the fraction as a coefficient. This coefficient the fraction has a denominator two to multiply everyone by two. Okay, so multiply everyone by two. So after you do that, you will get, I say this coefficient to become two. Okay. And uh, then the coefficient for this will become 15. Then you use this, so that becomes 15. Uh, so 15 here, and then this time two become 10. This time two become 10. So let's erase the five five and change them into 10 because you take the five times two, so that become 10. So 10 and 10. Now the problem is ask you what is the ratio of oxygen to water. So you will take the oxygen coefficient on the top. And divided by the coefficient of water, which is 10, 
So that become 1.5. Therefore, the answer is D. Okay, so this is for the uh, part two of a travel suite lecture.